Hey everyone, this is Tim, Associate Pastor with the Word of Life Church, and welcome to another edition of the Word of Life Church video ministries. Seems like it has been forever <laughs> since I've been able to get to a video, and I apologize. Uh, a lot going on, uh, you know, life stuff going on happens, uh, but we're glad to be back, amen. We thank the Lord for the beautiful day and beautiful weather he's been giving us, amen. Uh, the last, I don't know, what, six or seven days has been sunshine, uh, you know, cool in the nights and in the morning, but uh, just gives you that taste of spring, amen, and we're thankful that, uh, you know, seems like it's on its way, and uh, get uh, get out of uh, wintertime, <laughs> uh, you know, you never, you never know, we might be surprised, uh, this is, we've done this before, and uh, uh, been surprised by a winter storm before, you know, that's happened, uh, happened to us here uh in the years past uh you know it's it's under god's control but you know i would rather not uh rather not have it but uh we still rejoice whatever the lord has in store for us it's it's under his control and you know we want to accept his will whatever it is amen but we do we thank the lord for the day that he's made and for all the many blessings he's bestowed upon us been kind of under the weather for the last few days and uh, but uh, doing better and we thank the lord for it and uh, it, uh he's just been so good to us each and every one of us and uh you know uh, god is good to us amen if you're his child amen and uh, how to be his child amen people say oh we're all god's children well wait a minute <laughs> hold, hold it right there uh, you must be born again, amen? You must be saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Hear people and listening to people say, well, I believe in God. Well, you know, the Bible says that the devils, or demons, you know, said, I also believe and fear and tremble. The devil believes it. The devil and Satan, he knows it best, amen? And, you know, he must also bow at the name of Jesus, amen? So they know that there is a God as well. But, you know, you must be born again. You must believe in the only begotten Son of God. Amen. For you're not going to make it. A lot of people just believe, oh, well, I can say I believe in God. Well, yeah, and it's just in passing, if people say this and this and this, oh, and oh, well, yeah, I believe in God. But some of them would go as far as to say, oh, or, or the universe or something like that, you know, or, or something out there. And you're like, Okay, well, you've lost me right there, totally. You know, you were on the right track saying, hey, I believe in God. Uh, I want you to go a little bit further and say, believe in the only begotten Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there's no other way to heaven except through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the door to the sheepfold, amen. So the anyone comes up or tries to come up another way that's the same as a thief and a robber, amen. Said. So... Uh, people talk about and I heard me and people say that say I pray to God every day well there again hate to <laughs> you know pay to bust or burst people's bubbles when they say this people people hate you people hate you when you talk about this say they get mad say well you know I don't have to be this I don't have to be that uh, you know I, 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 you know, I believe in God and I pray to him and everything well if you're a sinner Let's just get this out. Let's just at the very get at the, straight out of the gate here. Let's just let's just get this out of the way. If you're a sinner, if you've not accepted Christ as your Savior and been washed in the, His blood, Amen. It's talking figuratively, figure figuratively, not saying that you have to be physically washed in the blood, but accepted the sacrifice the Lord Jesus did on the cross, Amen. And you've accepted that and allowed him 
to be your Savior. Amen. L knowing that he died for you and your sins and you, you're relying on him solely to be your sacrifice for the sins that you've committed. Amen. And you pray that what we gener uh, just generically call it the sinner's prayer. But when you get down, each prayer is going to be different from person to person. As long as you accept what the Lord did. He died on that cross. He was taken down, placed in that borrowed tomb in that third and appointed day. He arose victorious over death, hell, sin, and the grave for you and I. Amen. Who's seen of many, and then he ascended back to heaven, where now he sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession and prayer for you and I. Believe that, and then you pour your heart out to God. You know, the first first verse says confession is made unto salvation. Confess your sins unto God, ask, and then ask the Lord to save you, to come into your heart, amen. Take up a bow there, amen, to save you, forgive you for your sins, amen, and he will do that. That's the prayer that God is looking for. He doesn't hear. This is where get, if you tell people, people get mad when you say, he doesn't hear any other prayer except you being repentant of the sins you've committed and you accepting the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. That's when he starts hearing and answering your prayers. You can get mad if you want to, but the Word of God stands. The Word of God is the truth no matter what. The Bible, the Holy Bible, the Word of God will stand when the world is on fire. Amen. When media are running about to and fro, whew, oh my goodness, and the things that are coming up upon this, war, upon, upon this world. Men's hearts failing them for fear for the things coming on this planet, upon this world. Amen. The Word of God tells us. But yet, the word of God is going to stand. Amen. And those that follow and that are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. Are going to stand on the word of God. Amen. And if you're not rooted and grounded in the word of God. And that you're not standing on that. And in the power of the word. Amen. And you're not saved walking in the will of God then you're liable to fall off. Liable to follow false doctrine. Because now we have false doctrine, false teachers, false prophets, and even false Christ. Amen. People actually even saying, hey, I am the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's that, and he, that's come back. And people will follow these, these men. In some cases, women. My brother, it's being awful harsh, awful direct. Good. That's what we need, amen. We don't need to doubt, dance around the issues, amen. We need to get to the heart of the matter because the time is getting late, amen. I'm not talking about the day. I'm talking about the time that we are living in, amen. We need to get to the heart of the matter, quit dancing around the issues, get in the Word of God, preach and teach and witness the Word of God, live the Word of God, amen. And try our best to live the Word of God as we understand it and know it. Amen. And don't let that be an excuse. Well, uh, little known, little required, as the Bible said. No. <laughs> you need to get in the Word of God and learn and know what you need to do. Because God has a work for you to do. Now, each and every day. As we said so many times before, I want to strive to be closer to God. Amen. To walk a close walk as we can. Some days we're going to fail. Amen. And we have to get back to that altar of repentance and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. I have failed you. And be humble. And what I'm talking about here, especially live a humble, repentant life before the Lord. Amen. Don't lift that chin and, and have a prideful look. That's one thing God hates. It's a prideful look. Amen. One thing he hates pride. Amen. But lead a humble, repentant life before God. If you're wrong, if you've committed sin, 
don't try to hide it. Don't say, don't, don't, uh, in, uh, as, you know, false bravado saying, hey, I'm bulletproof or something like that. You've committed sin. Hey? Be honest. It's no shame, amen. Repent before the Lord and let him restore you, amen. The shame is living in it and not repenting and letting it just consume you. Amen. Have the sins that you committed going, as I've said many times, go before you. And not have any behind you that's going to stand in judgment against you. Amen. Brother, you're saved. Do you preach it? You should be not. Oh, no, no sin, no sin. No, no, no. I don't want to sin. No, we don't. Not, we're not supposed to. Amen. We're supposed to live a life pleasing unto God. Amen. But we do have examples in the Word of God. As we said, David, King David, said, a man after my own heart. God even said that. And look what all happened to him. Look what all he did. Now, I'm not saying this to give anybody an excuse. No, 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 no. And yes, we are under grace right now. Thank the Lord. Amen. But desire and seek after to walk at close at walk as we possibly can in these last days. Amen. For you don't want to miss out on heaven because it's going to be, oh, <laughs> it's going to be so wonderful. Amen. I think a lot of us are closer than we think. Seeing the things going on in the world, people always oh, heard that for such a long time. Yeah, it's closer than it was <laughs> that long time that we heard it back. Be y'all so ready. Watch and pray. Amen. It's what the Lord said. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord today to be saved. Amen. To have believed on the only begotten Son of God. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the world is going to, as we said many times, if you are a son of God or a daughter of God, <laughs> you're going to forget you ladies. Amen. By adoption, after the cross. Amen. And you're walking. In the light of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're saved, amen. And you're walking and walking a serious walk. A true walk. A biblical walk. According to the word of God, amen. People are not going to like you. If you point out, amen, the sins that are going up, if you point out, say, this is the word of God. This is not right, amen. The word of God says we are to do this. This is what the standard is, amen. There is no compromising, amen. This People are going to hate you. The Bible even says it. The people are going to hate you, turn you over, give you up, amen. Even members of your own family, even your friends, amen. That's what the Bible talks about. <laughs> the world hated and still hates the name of Christ. They hated Jesus. They will hate you. They will hate me. Fine. We are peculiar people. Hallelujah. We're just passing through. Amen. <laughs> I've been told before, say, hey, I know you're kind of weird. I know. <laughs> but but and they'll then they'll ask me a question. And I you know what? I laugh inside and chuckle. I may even laugh on the outside. I take that as a compliment. People say, well, that's kind of mean. I don't take it that way. And don't you feel that way about me. No, 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 it's because I, that, that it, I take it as a compliment. I, I, because I want to stand out as peculiar. Because the Bible says we are peculiar people, amen? That's where we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be comfortable in this world. We're supposed to stand out of this world, amen? Like a sore thumb, amen? As they say. Because I don't want to identify with this world. Amen. I want to preach and teach and live the gospel of Christ. Amen. In this world. In this dark, evil, fallen, worldly system that we live in. Amen. I want to be a light shining out in the dark. Amen. Of this evil, fallen system that we live in. Amen. Just like Paul did. Just like Peter did. Just like James, John, all the rest of the apostles and the disciples, amen. And the churches in the old time. Not the churches that we have today, which are few and far between. The true churches, I mean. Now, there's some, amen. They're light, hiding under a bushel. You hear everything but the 
power of God, amen, and the salvation, amen. But the shed blood of Christ, you will hear everything talked about, preached and talked about and taught and, you know, mentioned and everything except forgiveness by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and Christ died for you and everything. And you'll hear everything, stories and, and just everything but the power and the forgiveness of the death, the substitutionary death of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be like I mentioned. I want to be like Paul. I think we all have our people in the Word of God we identify with. Now I don't want to play favorites like <laughs> you know. We all all the Word of God is good, Amen. And you got to go where Phil led to go, Amen. <laughs> got to obey the Spirit of God, right? Book of Romans, chapter one. I want to be out, Paul, when it comes to this. Romans 1 and 16. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. People, I don't want to be ashamed of that. I want to announce it. I'm going to say, right, even if I have to wear it, and you shouldn't, you don't, shouldn't need to. Your actions, your your way of life, the way you walk should, should announce this. Amen. You shouldn't have to wear a shirt. You shouldn't have to wear a wristband that says, WWJD, what would Jesus do? You shouldn't have to wear a, like I said, a shirt that says Christian back and front. Or some people even getting tattoos. <laughs> and that's a whole other story right there, which we won't go into. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It says, for it's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. To live that. Amen. Be a living Bible in front of people. Amen. Walk it. Talk it. Live it. Amen. Now I'm talking to do it and then, you know, go behind the scenes and as I was talking about earlier, oh, you've got secret sins and stuff like that. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking in truth, amen? Walk it in truth. And said, if you've got something that's between you and the Lord, amen, get it over with. Repent, amen, and push it away, Amen. And stand up straight before the Lord, amen, asking forgiveness. You come before, if you're saved, you can come boldly before the throne of God, amen, and ask what you will. That's why we have grace, amen. Said, and if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus, amen. But stand for the Lord, amen. Now's the time. Now is the day. We look at what's going on in our very government. Amen. Now we have this Equality Act that's being passed. Now how much longer before we are forced upon to accept things in the church? And if we don't, what's going to happen? First to say, oh, we'll get our tax status pulled away. Well, you know, we should have gave, given that away a long time ago because, you know, that was a way for the government to get their hands in many churches to begin with. God still provide. That should have been a faith walk right there anyway. Should have let that go a long time ago. But the next step after that is, is well, you let these people in here, you let these transgenders, you let these sodomites in here and worship with you, or else we're going to sue you, we're going to shut your doors. That's just the beginning, people. It's coming. And here's the thing. We saw it coming, amen? We're not surprised. We're not taken unaware. And brother, you're shouting, amen? I'm just, I feel the Spirit of God, amen? That's why. I'm going to feel that. Hey, I, we're ready to preach. We're ready to teach, amen? But it's coming, amen? But that's okay. You know what? They just shut the doors of the building. Okay. The church is still going to go on. Hey, you hear that? Government? People who monitor this stuff? The church is still going to go on without you, without all these sodomites and transgenders. 
Now, I'm not saying I hate them. No, I wish they would change their ways, get saved, and stop the sin and the nonsense that they're doing. And they can. Christ can change them just like they change, just like he changed me, just like he changed many of you. Amen. No, they're, they're, they're born that way. And they're just confused and, and they're finding their way of who they really are. Hogwash. It's the enemy. It's, it's, it's these demons playing with their mind and playing and, 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 and getting in their head and, and playing and, and, and it's full in this culture right, this culture right now. Full. This demonic culture right now that's going about. It's being promoted by our government by our schools, by <laughs> even some of the churches. They ought to be ashamed of themselves, especially these churches. Each one of them need to get down on their knees and ask and beg God for forgiveness for allowing that nonsense. The Lord help well, we're just we're just being accepting and everything like that. I'm not saying you should bar the door when people come in like that, but when they come in, there should be enough spirit of God in that house of God, Amen, to change that heart, Amen. When they come in, the Holy Ghost should convict that heart, Amen, and change their ways. And it's not saying they're born that way or they just they're just finding who they're supposed to be because they were they weren't born who they were supposed to be. <laughs> Can't believe this nonsense, Amen. The Spirit of God can change those hearts and change all that nonsense, change that demonic junk. People say, oh, no, you can't. No, you can't, you can't change it. That's that's a lie. See, many people that change from that nonsense, they're saved, they're walking in the will of God and left that those lifestyles behind, amen, and walking in the will of God. But see, they don't want you to know that. That's a side they don't want you to see. That's the side that they, they try to hide. They don't want you to see that part about it. They don't want you to see and understand the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ can change a person's heart and their lifestyle, amen, and set them on the road to heaven, amen. So we're not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the power of you understand? The power of God unto salvation. Because it will change you from the top of the head to the sole of your feet. Amen? It will change how you walk, how you talk, how you live. Amen? Your very being. Amen? From the very core of your soul to the outside of your body. Amen? It will bring you from that walk that you're on your way to hell and put you on that narrow way. Amen? To everlasting life. To heaven. Amen? Hallelujah. power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. <laughs> God's chosen people. And also to the Greek. He included us. Amen. It says Greek means back then to the Gentile nation. To us. Amen. Everybody that was not a Jew. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written the just shall live by faith. That's a lot of people's issue. That's a lot of people's problem. Oh, how many times we talk about it. if you can't they say can't see it, can't touch it. Oh, no, there's no I can't I can't I can't believe it. Excuses once again. Hey, brother, you're being awful hard, amen. Because we, 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 it, the, the time. For, for being in that compromising state is over. Preachers, teachers, men and women of God, that time now, you know how to come toward a person because the Spirit of God is going to lead you, amen? But sometimes the Spirit of God is going to come hard, amen, and squash down these false doctrines, these false teachings, and come against the enemy, the God of this world, amen? And those oppressing spirits, amen, these demonic spirits that come to oppress and depress and bring these things to your mind, amen, to make you even think, amen, well, maybe I'm supposed to be a woman. 
or maybe I'm supposed to be a man. And 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 further on and further on into other stuff that God's word says is an abomination. Amen. Now listen to this in verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Now don't get me wrong. Let me, let me, let me, let me start out with this. God loves man and women. He loves his creation. Amen. It's his well, it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let's start it out with that. Amen. He would have that people would leave this stuff behind, repent, come to him, and be saved. Amen. First and foremost, I told you at the beginning how to do that. Amen. To come to Christ and ask for forgiveness. And he will take all that nonsense, that junk away that the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, makes you think. Because he'll put stuff in your head, he'll put stuff in your life and other people in your life that will drag you in the direction that you don't need to go. But once you get saved, amen, you're going to notice that that circle of people is going to draw away from you. That's a good thing. So what? All these friends and all these people and everything? Yeah, they're going to be friends with you while you're in this circle and this world of sin. Amen? But if they depart from you when you become a Christian, then you need to be around them anyway. That's harsh. Amen? Well, but guess what? He can put people around you that will lift you up, that will exhort you, that will pray for you. He will put Christian brothers and sisters around you that, that need to be around you, to help you, amen, in your walk with Christ, amen. Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There will be a time, and right now God is not pouring out his anger well, let's, put, let's put it a different way he's pouring out his anger to a certain extent with mixture there'll be a time it says that he's going to pour it out without mixture when he was going to pour his wrath upon this planet and the men and women and the things of this world without mixture the wrath of God will hit this planet like it's never hit before you do not want to be here. Wrath of God revealed from it. Ungodliness, unrighteousness of men who hold the truth. Guess what? You understand what that's saying? They know the truth. They know it. But they're holding it in unrighteousness. Why would they do that? Why would you have the truth, and but you're holding it back? Amen? You're holding it because why? Because maybe because you have it one an advantage. You're holding the truth, but you're holding it in an unrighteousness. Because why? Because who knows what you got. Maybe it's because of money. Maybe it's because of men's favor. Maybe it's several different things. But you know the truth, but you're holding it back for some reason. You will be held accountable. You must speak the truth of God without fear, without favor. One of my favorite phrases here lately. Amen. Preach the gospel. Amen. Teach the gospel. Live the gospel. Witness the gospel of truth. Amen. And not hold it in unrighteousness. Amen. Let it flow from you through the Spirit of God. Amen. For the wrath of God will be poured out upon you if you do not. Speak it. This is hard. Woo. My goodness. People are like, he's just mad. No, I'm not mad. This is just the word of God, amen. These are just warnings, amen, for the things that are here and that are coming more and more, amen. We're trying to get people out of these things and to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ so they can get saved, amen. Because it's all the false teachings that I hear, amen, and the things that I see and the, and the people that I listen to, amen. 
it's not things I hear. It's 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 not biblical. Amen. Say, so, well, it's not your ver no. It's it's just not a different thought. It's not like oh, okay, well, they just understand a different way. It it is wholly unbiblical. The stuff that I hear. It's so why so you have to go ahead and just let it go let it fly not to be angry not to yell you don't have to scream but you don't on here it's the spirit of God so it's going to sound like it's thundering and booming you know because of the sound and everything but no you, 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 got to, you have to speak the truth of God amen hey I've got to because I don't want to be held accountable amen I don't want to hold back the truth. And certainly not in unrighteousness. And Lord help me not to, not to not to drift over in any kind of unrighteousness. Amen. You gotta remember, we're still in this flesh, amen. We've not attained yet, amen. So that's why I said we have to lead a humble, repentant life before the Lord, amen. We're to show the people. Now I'm not saying Brother Tim's the leader of the of a movement that you know follow me amen no I, I follow Christ amen everybody else do the same amen it will follow we'll, we'll lift one another and exhort one another and live the Christian life and be all of us be together and all of us shining that light upon the hill for others to see amen But people should know. People have to know. We have to show it. Amen. Verse 19 says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. Move down to verse 20. And th this is a prominent verse that we hear, hear a lot and we talk about a lot because it says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen folks there is a there is a reality a side of eternity that is surrounding us that is right here that's right here in front of me that maybe you, can, you, you, you can't even really you can't even really measure it if you talk about measure it could be right it's a surrounding me that we're part of The, the, the invisible things of him in the creation of the world are clearly seen, amen. From all things came from the other side of eternity. He spoke everything, amen. So being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We have no excuse, amen, because we see the creation of God. People see the creation of God, but why? Because, I'm well, before we go to the next verse, because they made excuses. They made everything. They made a lie out of the creation of God, amen. They worshiped the creator creation more than the creator, amen. Said everything. <laughs> Even just such fables, such lies, amen. Lord help. No, I'm not going to sit here and go through everything. But we know what the is, is, is being taught about our world and about re reality and creation and everything. If you say, it's cause it, and you say, if you just say, well, God created it all. Oh, you're just, you're just laughed at. You're saying, oh, that's just the old fashioned way and everything like that. And, and that's not scientific, but you know, you know, the, you know the drill, you know what it is. Look what verse 21 says. It says, because of that when they knew God, at one time, this world, this people, now of course there was paganism and everything, but the church, now look at this here. 
let's read this and come back. It says, but because of that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was dark. And at one time, even the church, we, we all knew God, amen? We realized it. We knew God. We believed the Bible. We believed everything the Bible said. There was no question about it. Now, we believe everything but what the Bible says. We say, oh, this is science, amen. And we've tried to twist the Bible to fit what man has said about science. And, well, science says this. Well, the Bible says this. Well, uh, science has proof and everything. That's scientism. That's a cult, amen. What the word of God says stands. What it says, it's truth. No matter how outlandish it may seem, amen, the word of God is true. Well, they just didn't understand. They had the Holy Ghost working through them, telling them what to write. So whatever it says is truth, and whatever scientism says, well, let me say this, I'll just say it, even science thinks they know about the creation of God, what are you going to believe? I'm going to ask you where you stand right now. Are you going to believe the Word of God or are you going to believe science? Amen. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> Let's get down to where the rubber meets the road. Amen. Are you going to believe the Word of God or are you going to believe science? The Word of God and true science should be together. Scientism? No. That's a cult. That's where evolution and all that nonsense, that's where that falls into. And brother, how do we, we get into this? This is part of the false doctrine and false stuff that we're talking about here. All the stuff that's been, that, that we're getting bombarded with nowadays. This goes along with what we've been taught in the schools. You know, if kindergartens and first graders and everything are talking about being transgender, you know, at one point we thought we were in trouble because we were talking, with people, the kids were being taught evolution. Now look what they're being taught. Amen. Good Lord, help us. Created male and female. That's it. Period. They have 20 other different. Lord, help us. Look where we're at. 2021. 3-9 of 2021. Amen. Look where we're at. Imagine. Sorry about that. Imagine if a minister come from the late 19th century were to come, say, time travel. And actually, there's a, it's, it, it was, I think it was made in like 2001 or 2002. There was a, it wasn't it wasn't too bad of a little movie. Is a movie called Time Changer, and it was about it was a Christian movie. And it was about a it was about a theological professor that wrote a book, and he had this the these uh, other theological professors at the seminary, and one of them was really against this book because the book the guy wrote he was saying that 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 the morals were changing the morals were changing and that the that the church and the word of god needed a change to go along with it well through the cir circumstances this i'm trying to sum up the story that this guy that wrote this theological professor that wrote the book time traveled to that time to like there like 2001 whenever it was and everything like that and saw how that everything had changed, how the word of how the, how how the church and how man had changed the word of God through morals and everything like that, and how 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 big of a mess that the world had become, and how how his thesis in his book and everything like that had turned out. And of course, you know through the whole thing, he was appalled, and he went to he he became. Uh, you know, become friends with this uh, teacher, the science teacher, and while he was there, before he, he had four days before he would go back, he was going to go back in time, back to his, back to his own time, and he got to, he got to, 
uh, stand before this this science class and he started talking about just what I just said. Hey, the word of God is the truth and if it doesn't line up, if the science doesn't line up with the word of God, then the science is not true, the word of God is true. And all the students were sitting there kind of just looking at each other, kind of like, what? And the teacher was like, uh, just just appalled at what he was saying and was like, and dragged him out in the hall and was like, you're going to cost me my job. You can't mention anything about the word of God in, in, you know, in, in, in my class and everything. You're, you're going to get me fired and everything like that. Of course, the guy was like, oh, you know. He, and he realized of how things had, how, how things had become, amen. So that's why I mentioned if, if, a, if a, a preacher or something, or te a teacher or a, a theological person had come from that time and come to here, look how, how he would look upon things, how the word of God to him and how we interpret the word of God, how, how, how things would look to him. He wouldn't recognize a lot of it. Because why? Because we have interpreted it a different way to be inclusive, we've compromised it to be inclusive, we've changed it instead of allowing it to change us, amen. The last verse I talked about, they knew God. You know God right now? If you're saved, you know God. If you're not saved, then you truly don't know God. You may believe, oh, there's a creator, but you don't have a personal relationship with him. You can only do that through Christ. So they knew not God. They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Hence the time that we are in now. But these people said because they knew God. It wasn't too long ago that we knew God. Now I'm not going to get into the whole thing about this nation, you know, under God, indivisible, amen, amen. Because I have my questions and thoughts about that, about how this country was really founded have my concerns about that all I know is, is I, I can I can speak for myself you can speak for yourself and in my belief it's 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 through Christ Jesus amen and that's the way to the Father amen God in heaven on the throne amen Jehovah Yahweh But he's talking about here. So when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Anymore, that's what we're looking at. Hear amen? People knew God. They knew him once. But even as they knew him, they come to a point that they didn't glorify him anymore. And when you stop glorifying God, at what point you knew him, you stop glorifying, you stop worshiping, you let things slide, you let the word of God slide, you stop letting it change you and continuing because it, it will continue to change you and change your heart, amen, and continue to grow you in the word of God. If you stop that, guess what? The next thing will happen. It says, neither were thankful. You will lose your thankfulness. You will lose your gratitude, amen. Even something as small as saying, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you give us. You'll end up saying something. Other than that, you'll grumble. Oh, good grief, another, another day. Become unthankful. Talks about one scripture. About some several several sins. And, you know, those, those two are right together. So, unthankful and the next one says unholy so it's a progression here they glorified him not as God so neither were thankful next thing what happens is but become vain 
and their imaginations. You know, the enemy will do that. He'll give you vanity, give you imaginations, things. What's imaginations? Things that are not true. I can imagine a lot of things. I can imagine that I can do something and sneak around God. <laughs> like my old thought I've used many, many times that I think when some people, when they're in the church, once the church service is over, they believe once they walk out the church door that God's just inside the church. And when they walk outside the church, they believe God becomes deaf and blind to what they do and what they say. That would be <laughs> that would be vain in your imagination to think something as foolish as that. It's vain in your imagination to believe that you can commit sin and get by with it just because you say, oh, it's just my flesh sinning and it's not my spirit. It doesn't matter. You're still committing sin and God still sees that sin. Amen. And you have to repent. Amen. Ask the Lord to forgive you in Jesus' name. Amen. The spirit living inside of you, yes, it's perfect. Amen. But the flesh is not perfect. Amen. And it's not going to be. Not 100%. If it was, if it was able to be 100% perfect, the Lord Jesus wouldn't have come down and died for us. Amen. We wouldn't have needed that perfect sinless sacrifice. Amen. A lot of people see have become vain in their imaginations. And that leads to many, many thoughts and things. Well, I can get away with this. I can do this. And what's the next step in this? It says, and their foolish heart was dark. They became foolish in their heart. Became a fool, amen. You know, so I said the verse is the fool in his heart has said that there is no God. If your heart becomes darkened, as it says here, you know, you may even get to the point. And people have got to the point that they look at the world and what's being the 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 dreck that's just spewed out by the things of the world have to convinced and turn people from the ways of God that's what colleges are set up to do amen so they're sold they're set up to give you an education most of them are set up primarily Oh, sure, you'll get a degree, amen, and you'll be in debt for years. Don't worry about it, though. Yeah, you're going to be forgiven for your... I can't even get into that. But a lot, well, here is most time, first and foremost, is when you go into most of these classes, amen, is to destroy your faith in God. A lot of these teachers... And it has nothing to do with the class. But all these teachers, most of them will say, do I have any Christians in my class? What's that have to do with the curriculum? They just want to know because why? Because they want to make it hard on you. I don't know how many times I've heard that. But the child goes to college and comes out, their faith is destroyed. And the college has done their job. Come out and say, I don't, I'm not sure about that anymore. You know, I learned a lot of things, you know, about evolution and all this, all this other stuff. Believe in the sovereignty of man and how man and, you know, man is, is number one. And, you know, we, we're just, you know, there again, not going into all the other 
garbage that goes along with that. You guys know. You guys know what's what's out there. You guys know what they teach. Everything meant to destroy the faith. Shipwreck the faith of many. Living in this day, many hearts are being darkened. As we're living, as I said many times, in this dark worldly system, it's fallen. At one time, because of the vileness and abominations and all the things that were going on, that would take a long, quite a bit to really go into, the world was cleansed, amen, by the flood, amen. Well, this next time, it's going to be by fire, amen. And people are going to realize what a mistake that they've made. They're going to wish that they had stayed in the center of God's will. All we can do, like I said, is be that light shining on the hill. Be there for people when they need it. Be led to people. Be led by the Spirit of God to be that light, to be a help to witness to show people there's still men and women serving God in this day amen that live according to the word of God amen that are not hypocrites because I'm sick of hearing that I don't go to church because it's just full of hypocrites they go to church on Sunday and then the rest of the week they just live like I do so why do I need to go to church if they're just going to live like I do, they're just going to cuss and do this and do that, and just you know, and you know, uh, say that they drink and do all that. Why then? Why do I need to go to church if they just live like I do? Tired of hearing that. Tired of seeing that. When are we going to get down to business with God? Amen. That's the problem. If we do that, then we're going to then then we'll see a move of God. Amen. Then we'll see the Holy Ghost move. We'll see. Churches come back up on their knees, serving God, amen, in repentance. And we'll see in the houses of God the Holy Ghost move and people coming in and getting saved, amen. Starts here and there, amen. Lord, help us. <laughs> Fired up. We got to get ourselves straightened out. We got to get our churches straightened out if if we want to be an effective witness for Christ in these last days. What did the Lord Jesus say? He said, "If you can't, when He came back, would He find would He find faith on the earth?" Was that actually a question, or was that a, kind of a rhetorical question? He's going to find few faith. Because there's few there's, that's going to be found on that narrow way, the Bible says. There's going to be many that's going to be found in these churches, as I've said, especially here lately, that Ichabod is going to be written above the door of that church. The Spirit of God is going to be long departed from that church, from the building. Lord help us. It's a serious thing, people. We're dealing with eternity. We're dealing with people's souls, eternal, their eternal souls. Amen. We're not talking about church membership. We're not talking about going to a building. Amen. To worship. That's part of what we do. Amen. But as I've said a lot here lately, talking about our reasonable service. Our reasonable service needs to go all the way to our death for the Lord Jesus. He died for us. We give our lives. He gave our life. He gave his life for us. We give our life back to him. And our reasonable service should go all the way even to our death for him. For his cause. For a witness for him. 
people say, oh yeah, we come to go to the house of God. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just our reasonable service right there. Uh-uh. No. Our reasonable service should go all the way to whatever the Lord Jesus said he wants you to do. Through the Spirit of God. Amen. What do he lead you? If it's missionary work, if it's whatever, I don't care what it is. But it should go all the way to the blade to your neck, to the gun barrel to your head, to whatever it is. Giving your life for the cause of Christ. All that should be our reasonable service. We're just strangers and pilgrims passing through down here. Amen. Live for God. Work for God. Do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. And today is the day to get serious with God. If you have not. Amen. Because we're seeing everything. The floodgates are getting ready to bust open like we have never seen before. And we better be ready to stand. And stand on the word of God. If not, we're going to be carried away with all the chaos that's going to ensue. Amen. That's God's word for today. Thank the Lord for his word. We thank him for the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For what we feel in our hearts. Thank him most, like I said, for the salvation. I guess we can't thank him enough for that. And thank him for repentance. Thank him for that he accepts the repentance amen if we do something we're able to come to him and ask for forgiveness amen because if we didn't we'd be <laughs> that's it we'd be gone amen if it was just a one shot and everything hey that's it we'd be gone but live to please god each and every day amen do your best walking in the will of god trying to move up and draw closer to him amen because that's what he wants. He wants a close walk with you. And that's what we should desire. Amen. If we're saved. The will of God. Working for him. Amen. Working for the kingdom. Amen. And the work out there. It's in the field. is white for harvest. Amen. Go out. And try. Be a light shining. Amen. To say be the, the true article. <laughs> Whatever you put. Be the true Christian. Be Christ-like. Amen. He can say, seek and save that which is lost. Amen. Fulfill the mission of, a, of the true Christian. Amen. And stand on the word of God. Amen. And stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Because he's our enemy. And he's trying to pull others. And he's fighting against us. So let's fight back against him. Amen. Use your power in the Lord. Amen. That he's given us. Amen. Because we're strong. And the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. And he assures us victory according to the word of God. So use it. Walk it. Live in it. Amen. I'm going to hush. <laughs> so God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ Jesus on each and every one of you. Lift one another up in prayer. Exhort one another. Pray for the sick and afflicted. Most of all, the back sudden the end say that they come to the Lord and come back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Amen. And... Uh, uh, let's pray for this country this nation uh, you know <laughs> the laws it's passing right now and, and may be getting passed in the next little while it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen church needs to step up even if it, it cause, it's going to cause us persecution we're still going to have to step up and be counted Standing for God. No compromising. Amen. All right, guys, this was Tim, associate pastor with the Word of Life Church. Another edition of the Word of Life Church video ministries. And take care. We love you guys. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Amen. Amen. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye now.